Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there. Hi there. Hey. So there. I stand at the door and knock. Actually, it's a microphone. <laughs> Let us in. Let us in. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chin. <laughs> I was going to go there, but I wasn't <laughs> sure, you know, uh, if we're going to be talking any more old covenant stuff, if I should bring the three little pigs into it. Or not. <laughs> well, as long as you, you know, cast some demons into them. <laughs> and then run, run them off our, a cliff. Cast our podcast before swine. I <laughs> <laughs> shall not do that. You know, I was thinking about that. I don't know if we talked about that at all. Um, just real quick here, you know, do not cast your pearls before swine. I just can't remember if we talked about that. Yeah, on, you, on the you brought it up. Uh, Did I? I okay, up a couple weeks back or or so. Okay, no big deal. And never mind. <laughs> yeah, we we get mixed up on what week it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine what's going to happen as we get older. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, all those years I thought, do not cast your pearls before swine was Christians. Don't cast your pearls before the, all the rotten people out there. But it was it was Jesus' word to the Jews. Well, go back and listen to that then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe and, I and should. <laughs> and that's good news for me, Joel, because I don't have any pearls or pigs, you know. so <laughs> The only pigs I have are in my refrigerator in the form of bacon. <laughs> and that is good enough for me. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, the ministry of Jesus and why he taught two covenants. Let's continue. Uh, thanks for, for listening, by the way. Growingingrace.org. I don't know how you're hearing us right now, but you can find archived programs going back more than 10 years. And some will go way back to the beginning. They they write to us and tell us that. And I'm amazed by that. But I'm, I'm also excited because obviously God's doing something in your life in the way of grace for you to be that that eager to, to hear the message. And I, I think as you listen from uh, over the years to, to where we are now, maybe you'll see us possibly grow in our journey in grace, because um, even though there's a consistency in our message um, in, in what we've done on this podcast over the years, uh, you'll probably notice some things that we get a little bit hung up on that we didn't years ago, just because we didn't have the the understanding that we do on some things now, and it'll probably be that way 10 years from now as well. So the, this thing with Jesus, though, Joel, and, and his ministry, and why sometimes he was teaching the law to Jewish people who were under that law, and we as Gentiles, what are Gentiles? Class, just a reminder, <laughs> Gentiles <laughs> are non-Jewish born people. They weren't just heathens. They weren't just sinners. We are Gentiles. And so were those people back at that time during Jesus' day, basically people who were not born of the Jewish race. They were not under the law. So we as Gentiles never were associated with that law that came through Moses and the commandments and all of that. But the Jewish people were. And it was a serious covenant that was put together there. And it was a covenant that depended on their ability instead of God's ability. And that's quite different from the new covenant. So sometimes, again, Jesus ministering that law and why was the law given? To show people, basically, that they needed God, that they could not live up to the standard, the perfect and holy and righteous standard that that law demanded. And Jesus would elevate that law during times in his ministry to show these people of the position, the hopeless position that they were in under that law. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came to redeem them from that, the Bible says, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under that law. So we can learn a lot from this, even though we weren't under it as Gentiles. But one thing I think, Joel, that we can get into here today, and then we'll next week we'll start moving into some more things that Jesus pointed to about the new covenant that would be coming. But let's suppose, just for example, some of the harsh and, and uh, rigorous things, the, the heavier things that Jesus Jesus would demand of people in these instances where he taught the law, for example, sell everything you have, give it away, carry your own cross. I mean, these certain demands, give up everything, leave your family, hate your father and mother. I mean, all these things that were kind of harsh and heavy. You can't be my disciple if you don't do this. Let's suppose, let's put on a whole different mindset here as we've been trying to help people get established in this as we've gone along here during this series. For example, 
carry your own cross. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple, Luke 14, 27. Suppose Jesus wasn't ministering this to us future believers as some sort of commitment mantra, but suppose that he was telling those people at that time, Jewish people under the law, here's what you're going to need to do to be like me, to be my disciple, to be my follower. You're going to have to achieve this high standard because you haven't been reaching high enough under the law. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be harder. You're going to have to do this, this, and this to be my disciple and to enter, enter eternal life. Suppose he was saying that to show them they couldn't do it instead of trying to tell us what we needed to do. Hmm. That is quite a lens to look at things through. You know, you take a look at a lot of these what we would call harsh words of Jesus. And, you know, we, we've got a couple options. One option is to skim over it and say, well, wow, you know, uh, I'll, I'll just do my best. Or, or you can actually take Jesus seriously and realize that he meant what he was saying, but realize that it had nothing to do with Christianity. Just something that you were talking about there, you know, carry your own cross and forsake your family, hate your father and your mother. Uh, your brother and your sister, uh, all these things, tough, hard, harsh things. And yet at another place that we'll actually get to in um, the weeks to come on this podcast, when we do start taking a look at some of the new covenant things that Jesus was saying, he said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So you take a look at that. He's inviting people to come to himself because he's going to give them rest. And yet... He's saying these harsh things, these hard things, take up your cross, carry your own cross. You know, he, he said, you're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to take up your own cross daily and follow me. Sell all you have, give to the poor. All these things that we try to, because we don't understand why Jesus said those things, we try to make them fit into Christianity, not realizing that certain things that he said, and this is one of the big points of this series, that some of the things that Jesus said weren't a matter of him ministering to Christians and to future Christian believers. It was a matter of him ministering to those who were under the law to show them just how harsh and hard it is to try to follow the law and to be justified that way, when in the new covenant it would be true. We enter into God's rest in the new covenant. And so, carrying on with this idea, you know, whoever desires to come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will say, and the gospel's sake will save it. So it's like, okay, I've got to, <laughs> I've got to take up my cross and follow him. I gotta hate my father and my mother. Well, that's just hyperbole, Joel. You're just exaggerating to make a point. Now, I think he was serious. What about you, Kat? Well, yeah, because people will sit there and scratch their heads. I wonder what he really meant. I wonder what illustration he was trying to paint here. Was he being figurative? Uh, you know, well, of course he was being figurative, right? No, I, I think Jesus, just like uh, when we talked about uh, cutting off hands and plucking out eyes to avoid sin, I think Jesus really meant what he said. That's from a previous podcast. You'll have to go back. Uh, but here I think he's, he's also being literal. I don't think he's talking about a made-up cross or some sort of figurative, or yeah, something. figurative uh, way of, of trying to say something else. I, I just think Jesus meant what he said, and so like what you were talking about, whoever tries to save their life will lose it. Look, Jesus said, in order to be his disciple, what is a disciple again? Just a pupil, a student, one who learns. And Jesus said at one time that the the pupil, the student, the disciple becomes like the teacher, and so. How is that going to be possible? <laughs> and, and so we got we have people even today striving and struggling to become more like Jesus. Well, we did become like Jesus in a new covenant, but we were born into it because we couldn't achieve what Jesus had done in his lifetime with fulfilling the law. And, and he wasn't expecting us to be able to do it either. He was trying to show these people that they couldn't do it. So carry your own cross. If you're going to be like me and, and follow me, guess where I'm going? Pick up your cross, 
literally, you're going to have to pick up a cross like I'm going to have to pick up a cross. You're going to have to do what I do. The problem is that our cross would not bring redemption, even if we were able to get it that far. None of these disciples carried their cross. They yeah. didn't do it um, at, <laughs> at this time that they were being ministered to. Whoever tries to save their life will lose it. Jesus said that in the ninth chapter of Luke in the context of the disciples carrying their own cross. But we find whoever loses their life for the sake of Jesus will save it. So you see, your life was lost. Uh, it can also be uh, defined as killed and is no longer your own because you were placed into him. You died with him and received his life. Don't forget about Galatians 2.20. So we're not here to try to save ourselves. There's no need for us to do what Jesus did by suffering with our own cross. And he carried a cross one time for all. If we would have been doing that, we would have had to do it daily, repeatedly, much like animal sacrifices, which couldn't take away sin. Tenth chapter of Matthew. Do I still have time, Joel? We haven't hit the two-minute warning, have we? Right now. <laughs> We're at the two-minute warning. Cha tenth chapter of Matthew. <laughs> Jesus said, whoever does not take up their cross and follow after him is not worthy of him or not deserving. Again, that was also in the context of being his disciple, meaning becoming like Jesus through what one does. Uh, the truth is that everyone was undeserving of the title of disciple when it comes to being like Jesus and following his lead, and doing everything perfectly, and actually carrying a cross that brings redemption. It couldn't be done. Um, it couldn't be done. And, and here's the other thing. Looking into the New Covenant writings after the cross from the apostles in those New Testament epistles, there is never any reference to us carrying our own cross, but there are many references to the cross. Joel, I'll let you wrap this up. Mm -hmm, that's right. The cross of Jesus Christ. The, Jesus is the only one who really did take up his own cross, and it had the effect that it needed to have. He died, and sin was placed on him. He became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Even the two thieves that were on the cross that actually took up a cross with him, they didn't die for the sins of the world, and neither do we. But Jesus did. And on his cross, Romans 6, 6 says that our old man, that is the person that we were in Adam, was crucified with him. See, it wasn't our cross that we took up, but we went on his cross with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. Galatians 2, 20, you know, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's the good news right there. We didn't die our own death. We died with Christ, and we were raised again with him. But we've done plenty of talk over the course of uh, many different podcasts here about some of the bad news words of Jesus. And we're going we're gonna to get started into some of the good news words of Jesus, differentiating between the, the words that Jesus shared that brought people to the end of themselves, uh, the bad news, law words of Jesus, contrasting that with some of the good news uh, words from Jesus where he was looking ahead to the new covenant. We'll get started with the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery next week, right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.